Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I'm Jody Collier. And I'm Andrew Cotton. This is part two of the video where Andrew welded the open root 7016 overhead. So we're going to come, come over top of that with another pass of 7016, and I'll let Andrew tell you what we're, where we're going after that. So we're going to be doing a 332 7016 hot pass, and then all subsequent passes are going to be done with the 7018 which I'm going to probably jump up right up to a 1 8 and fill it with 1 8 and then cap it 2 bead cap with 7018. All right, and that is kind of like per the procedure that he's working with at his company, Nuco. So that's what we're going to do, 2 bead cap with 7018. Hey, if you're not doing this particular test, it doesn't matter. All these fill passes and cover pass, all the rod angles and amperages will apply on a regular overhead 7018 test. So we got some of that stuff coming too. Stay tuned. Let's, let's weld. Let's do it. All right. The part one video was just the root pass, and I will link it up right here. So this is not a true overhead. It's a 45 degree, basically, because this is kind of the hard part of pipe when you come around the bend, and this plate is just a mock-up gearing somebody toward passing a pipe test. Now we're going to come over that root pass after it's ground out with a 332 7016 at 80 amps. I'm going to let Andrew explain what he's seeing and what he's doing right here. When you go about doing your hot pass, you want to make sure you're moving quick enough so you don't burn through. You also want to make sure that you're switching up your technique just a little bit to make sure you're wetting in nice and flat. As you can see, left a nice crater. The bead is nice and flat, tied into both sides of the wall. You'll see I employ a couple different techniques. I'm doing a little bit of a side to side at my restart. I start to do a little bit of a circular technique. I'll also go into a V technique. It's really whatever technique that you're most comfortable with, with getting a nice consistent flat bead, not trapping any slags on your, on your toe and making sure the weld stays nice and flat in the center. And it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it again. Always, always, always have your restarts, your arc strikes for your restarts inside the bevel where you weld back over them. You know, some inspectors are, are tighter than others, but generally speaking, an arc strike can fail you on a test. You just got to get in the habit making your arc strikes right ahead of the weld, coming back into that crater so that you don't see any low places or high places and welding right back over your arc strikes. Working your way towards the top of the plate, you're going to start seeing me just kind of whip out a little bit and then re-strike just to fill. Not a very good practice, but again, this is just a practice piece for getting your plate fill, fully filled up to work towards pipe. So I don't have a backing strip or a runoff tab. I'm just trying to fill this joint up as full as it can be so I can go over it with a nice filling cap pass. All right, it's just a little bit low to try to put a, a cover pass on it here. So Andrew's gonna come across it with another pass. We're going to 1 8 7018 now at 105 amps. This is a Aesop Rebel 285. It's got hot start and arc control. The arc control is set on 50%, hot starts on 5%, and it's doing a pretty good job. Now we're going to 1 8 here, and Andrew is going to move out fairly quickly because, you know, it's kind of full to put a 1 8 rod in there, so he's not going to mess around. You can see he's using a little bit of an upside down U type technique, building up a little shelf. Well, I'll let, I'll let Andrew tell you what he's doing here. The height that I put my, fill, my hot pass in kind of left me at a questionable state where do I use a 332 for my fill or do I use a 1 8 I just decided to go with the 1 8 so I would be able to finish quicker. Um, you go with whatever you're comfortable with and if you choose to use the larger diameter electrode you just have to move a little bit quicker maybe employ this technique or a circle technique as you see me kind of do at the stop of my pass. Again 105 is the amperage we're using strike right back in and you're going to see when the next shot is it's going to be a nice flat um, almost flush fill pass where i still left my bevel edges for a nice guide to fill me out okay so we're getting toward the end of the uh end of the plate here again there's no runoff tabs or backing strap or anything so andrew's going to run it all the way up all the way up keep going keep going and let it just solidify so that it's fully welded all right, we're in really good shape for the cover pass here, a two bead cover pass. It's just a little below flush. In places it is flush. You can still see the edges of the bevel for a good guideline. I turned the machine up to 110 amps because I decided it was the plate was cooled off enough where I didn't want the 
arc to be too cold, the rod to be too cold as I was doing out my cat pass. The problem with having the rod too cold and the amperage down too low when trying to do a cat pass is you try to hang out long enough to let the toes wet out, but at the same time, it's building up more at the at the face of the weld. So by turning it up just five amps, the toes will wet out faster, allowing me to progress faster up the plate, a nice smooth weld transition all the way from the bottom to the top. One benefit of going to the 1 8 rod here that I'm seeing is, you know, and this is a seven inch test plate, which is fairly common for this, for this thickness. You, you made it all the way without a restart. And you know, anytime you can avoid a restart, that's a good thing. That's the, that's the payoff for using a 1 8 less restarts. Same thing all the way to the end of the plate. We'll chip that, wire wheel it, and we're ready to put that last pass on there. Now for this pass, we need to watch the, the, left, hand, the left hand toe of that weld really closely just to make sure there's no undercut and make sure that toe wets out and any, any, any undercut that might happen, you're going slow enough that it will fill up. Again, welding over the arc strike junk that you put in there by starting ahead of the crater keeping a really close eye on that left hand toe. Now when you're going up the plate on this on that last cover pass, also try to make sure that you're covering the previous pass from toe to crown. So the toe of this weld that you're putting in to the crown of the last weld, giving it a nice transition. Again, if you're following API code to the company that I, I work for, you're gonna want a 16th cap. This is just slightly above 1 16th, but for pipe, you're gonna see it. Now getting to the very end here, you start to see I go real wide. Make sure you keep that rod stuffed up in there. You'll see that puddle follow me all the way to the top, and then it won't leave a, a drip at the end. Again, this is not a true overhead position plate test. This is just a mock-up helping you to transition to pipe welding for an open route 7016 with a 7018 fill-in cap.